Welcome to the Black Hills of South Dakota. Uh, road cut, not a random road cut. I guess it could be because I just happened upon this. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. And like any uh, respectable geologist, I've always got one eye on the road and one eye on the rocks. And as I came north out of Wind Cave National Park, uh, this was my first exposure of the, this rock type in the Black Hills. And immediately I pulled over uh, once I saw these rocks sparkling uh, in the beautiful afternoon sunlight, uh, I screeched to a halt and had to look at them. And so I thought I'd share that with you a little bit. So what we have here is um, at the core of the Black Hills are the oldest rocks. The Fundamentally, the Black Hills form a an anticline or a fold where the oldest rocks are in the middle. And in that center, there's really two major groups of rocks that make up the core of the Black Hills. There are Precambrian rocks that are anywhere from uh, two and a half to maybe 1.8 or so billion years old uh, metamorphic rocks. And then intruding those rocks was magma that cooled and crystallized to form granite and other associated rocks about 1.7 billion years ago. And the very last thing to cool and crystallize from that magma, all the elements in the stew, if you will, had been used up to make most of the minerals we see in the granite, things like uh, feldspars and quartz and uh, biotites, things like that. But at the very end of that process, um, the solution of the magma was a little bit water rich and when water rich magma cools and crystallizes typically at the very end stage of magma crystallization we get a very coarse grained granite with very exceptionally large crystals uh, known as pegmatite um, and really it's more texture than a composition so you could also call this a, a pegmatitic granite and what you get here then are these just exceptionally large um, crystals. Let me zoom in here so you can just see how big some of these fabulous um, mica crystals are, these big muscovite mica crystals. And other crystals as well. There's really large feldspar crystals in here, quartz. Typically it's lighter in color because you've used up a lot of the iron and magnesium that would be needed for some of the darker colored minerals. And pegmatites in the Black Hills are uh, really world-renowned for not just by mineral collectors, but they're also valuable commodities because a lot of the elements, um, trace elements that might be in that magma stew initially, that really just don't have a home with other minerals, things like boron or beryllium, um, maybe sometimes vanadium or titanium, those things end up finally crystallizing at the very end here in the pegmatite. So what we have here, let me back up and maybe I should have started with this. So much, so much excitement. Um, is we have this very large white pegmatite dike or pegmatitic granite that's cutting across these darker rocks. So hopefully you can make out uh, the margin of the dike right about here and the other margin of the dike here. So this one's quite wide. This one's maybe, uh, maybe, I don't know, seven to eight meters, maybe 24, 25 feet ish in terms of its width. Uh, there's another one down the way we could go look at here in a second. Um, but that's, this is the furthest north I've come because I screeched to a halt when I saw this. So pretty remarkable. Let's see what other um, minerals we might be able to identify here in this pegmatite. Um, and there's plenty of broken pieces at the bottom, so I'm going to refrain from using my rock hammer because it'd be a shame to just beat up this outcrop when others can enjoy it. Oh my goodness, here's, here's the real winner in the prize. So what we have here, oh, this is awesome, I hope it can get, get it all in. This entire pink chunk that... Gosh, how big is that? Half a meter, maybe like almost two and a half feet across from here over to the far end over here. This is one, what I think is one discrete, 
potassium feldspar crystal. Remarkable. So that just shows you how big these crystals can get uh, in these pegmatites. And I think in some instances, they can be even, even, even larger than this. Um, so the, the attractive thing here for some might be the, the mica crystals, which in the sunlight are just quite dazzling. You can find them here in thick books, actually right up here against this uh, potassium feldspar is a, a book. You can see sort of the little layers on it there. That's a bunch of muscovite mica crystals just stacked end on end. Um, lots of quartz in here. The quartz tends to be the smoky quartz variety. So here's a chunk here of some smoky quartz. There's a big blob of it right here. Nice big, big quartz crystal. And then the other mineral that's in here that you just don't see often, at least I don't, um, and let me find, I just saw one, is a black mineral that can kind of look like hornblende, but it's actually called tour tourmaline. Um, and I think I saw some over here. So let me find you a nice tourmaline crystal. Here's another big chunk of quartz right here. And where is the tourmaline? I was just looking at a bunch of it. And now that I'm trying to show it to you, it's all being deceptive. Let me come over here. Let's find that deceptive mineral. Um, here's a mass of it in here. Let me get my shadow out of the way. This black material in here. But what I'm really looking for, it tends to form uh, hexagonal crystals. And so let me see if I can find a good chunk for you. And again, a big chunk of quartz. And, oh, here we go, maybe. Here's a piece of it, but this one's broken. Um, whoops, you can't see it. There we go. So you can see this flat surface here. Let me zoom the camera out a little bit. Focus, there we go. Flat surface here and then another face here. So if you look at it end on, you might be able to see two sides of this hexagonal crystal. But let's see if we can keep talking and looking and find a full intact hexagonal crystal. I am not going to be able to crawl up this without probably wrecking myself. Um, let's come back down here and see what else we can find. Oh, here's a nice stack of muscovite mica crystals as well. So you can see, let me get that in focus for you. And then if you look at it end on, it's just all stacked up, just these sheets. So this is a, these are all mostly all silicate minerals um, that form when the, this granitic magma cools and crystallizes. I have better shot of finding some of that tourmaline down here. How about this piece? Um, that is mostly muscovite. Maybe a little bit of burl. Maybe some of that bluish material as well. Okay, let's see what we have here. Oh, no, that's not one. Uh, here I am promising you a new mineral and having trouble finding it. Um, <laughs> Funny thing is, before I started filming, I found a chunk with a nice piece of tourmaline and put it in the back of my truck. So I suppose I could go, let's go look at that one real quick. That might be as good as rooting through all these. So, uh, and then we can walk down and look at the other dike and then also maybe check out these older Precambrian rocks that the pegmatite dikes intrude. So let's grab this one here. Okay, so if I can get the right angle on this. So this black, I'm looking at it end on, so hopefully you can see the, the six sides to this hexagon here. This is uh, tourmaline. It actually has striations on the side. So you might be able to see some of the lines along uh, its face there, and then it's all just squished in, just like as pegmatites, uh, their character, it's, it's squished in with some 
quartz right here. Sorry. Um, some muscovite mica right here. Just a little cluster of several different types of minerals. But hopefully you can now make out that black. Um, it's usually an elongated mineral, so it makes like little needles and such. So, so let's go look at the um, dark colored rocks here. And then let's end with that last pegmatite dike at the other end of the outcrop. So if we come and grab uh, some of this stuff, um, it's also very mica rich. You can see it shining. It has layers to it. So these are these metamorphic rocks that the pegmatitic granite has intruded. So these are mostly schists. Um, another nice one here. This one's a little bit different color with some more of the silvery kind of look to it. Um, some of these may have, I'm not seeing any right off the bat, but maybe in detail, some of these sometimes have garnet crystals in them. So the schist itself could be a desirable kind of commodity to check out. And then let's walk down here and look at this last pegmatite dike. Now this one down here is not as thick. It's only maybe a meter or so thick, about three feet wide. You can see it right here. Um, zoom out so you can see more of the outcrop there. And then what's interesting here, and we need to look at it up close. I didn't really spend much time on it. It has this little interior black zone right here down the middle, um, right down the center which may be a higher concentration of darker colored minerals. So take a look at this. As always, road cuts mean you have to move up quickly. Yeah, so this looks like, I think these are all tourmaline crystals, all this black. Now they're just all sort of squished together, so it's hard to make heads or tails of them. Um, but on some of them, I, I can make out the overall hexagonal shape that's common. So this pegmatite dike appears to have sort of a central zone that's um, mainly made up of tourmaline crystals. Again, sorry for the crappy videography. It's just really hard to get your body up here. Yeah, and you can see that sort of snaking its way uh, up the up the hillside there. So similar to what we saw before, similar uh, story and composition, just a little bit different zoning in this one. And I'm sure we'll see more of these as we head. Whoops, as we head up the road. But I just got so excited with this one that. You know, you never know if you'll see something as good. So you tend to stop and, and look at it while you have the chance. So um, very cool. So uh, an introduction to the pegmatitic dikes found in the Black Hills and some of their beautiful uh, crystallization that we find in there, some of the minerals. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And thanks for joining me here from the Black Hills of South Dakota.